Mindanao has outpaced Metro Manila in new COVID-19 cases. The health department attributes this to new COVID variants, as well as deficiencies in detection and treatment. To tell us more about what's happening in Mindanao, we have Philippine Genome Center Mindanao Program Coordinator Lyre Murao joining us via Zoom. Good evening, Doc Lyre. Is it true that the COVID-19 surge in Mindanao is really attributable to new variants? And do we have the technology to confirm that as early as now? Yes, uh, we don't know yet if the surge is, can be attributed to these variants, and that's something that we have to figure out uh, first. Uh, do, yes, we do have some technologies available that can uh, be able to, to answer the question. So we do have uh, sequencing uh, uh, deployed at the Philippine Genome Center Mindanao just recently. This is a portable sequencer. And we can use this uh, machine also to, to do some sequencing for the SARS-CoV-2. All right, so does that mean that samples do not need to be sent to Manila anymore, or do you still do that? Well, actually, this uh, project that we are working on right now is just a pilot project on sequencing. This is not yet part of the DOH Genomic Biosurveillance Program. So uh, the, the project that we are involved right now is a collaboration between Accessible Genomics the Research Institute for Tropical Medicine, and the University of Glasgow. So we will do uh, an initial sequencing of selected yeah. number of samples all over the country. And Philippine Genome Center Mindanao be, will be one of the partner sites working in this team. And uh, in this case, we're going to work with different laboratories all over Mindanao to be able to know the variants that are circulating in these areas. All right, and having said that, Doc Liar, very good news, by the way. Do we actually have um, information on specific prevalent COVID variants that are going around there in Mindanao? Oh, there's not much data going around right now here in Mindanao. Uh, and I think the, the uh, initiative that we're doing is really timely because we are now at the period when there's a surge here in Mindanao. And so it would be really nice to know what variants are circulating in the areas. All right. Now, going back to that pilot uh, genome sequencing project that you're uh, doing right now over there, how will this project specifically address that surge in Mindanao? Or will it even come in time for that? And what is your projected turnaround for this project? Yeah, so um, for the first question, um, what, uh, what kind of information or how can sequencing help? Aside from knowing the variants, we know that uh, we have to monitor variants because these uh, variants have certain characteristics that we need to be um, wary of. For example, these variants may have increased uh, transmissibility or eventually may ha we may have vaccine evasive variants. So these are some of the things that we need to monitor and sequencing can help us do that. But aside from that, we can also do some transmission studies. We can know how the virus moves, where it's moving, and where it's clustering. So that kind of information is very important. I'd like to uh, equate that to the game of Patintero. I think we're all familiar with Patintero. In Patintero, you really have, it's like a mind game. You really have to know the move of your opponent so you cannot let your opponent uh, come in to your territory. So it's the same thing. We have to know the moves of the virus to be able to block it from spreading further. And uh, we can't just play a mind game with the virus. Mm -hmm. So we have, to be, we have to have calculated moves. And we can do that if we have accurate information. And that accurate information we can get from sequences. That's right. Strategy, strategy, strategy. Now, yeah. Doc, uh, Doc Lyre, real talk this time. How is the general COVID-19 situation down there in Mindanao based on your observation? Well, um, it's, it's a bit uh, loosening here right now. I, I could see, this is just my personal observation. Mm -hmm. uh, I could see that uh, there's more people going around outside and there's less restrictions on the movement. Mm -hmm. But recently, for example, here in Davao City, we have just been uh, declared MECQ last Saturday. And uh, we're just waiting for guidelines on, on the, uh, what's going to happen next. But yeah, so um, I think we really have to be careful, very careful, and not be complacent with uh, our actions at this time of the pandemic. 
All right. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate also all the insights and sharing the plants of the Philippine Genome Center. That was Dr. Lyer Murao of the Philippine Genome yes. Center of Mindanao joining us today. Thank you, Doc.